Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon, depending on when your class is. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at reading and interpreting line graphs. You did some notes on this already, and here is where we are going to practice. So your goals for this segment are to define and identify the parts of a line graph, to examine line graphs presented in examples, and to read and interpret information from line graphs. So graphs, as you know, help you communicate information in a format that shows how one piece of information is related to another. Line graphs can be used to compare changes over the same period of time for more than one group. So a line graph is used to organize and analyze information about two variables, the independent variable and the dependent variable. We'll call the independent variable IV and the dependent variable DV for abbreviations. The horizontal or the x-axis is used to show the quantity um, for line graphs, that is time. And this is the independent variable. It's the variable you can manipulate or change. You can decide what time you're recording data points at. Um, but it's not dependent on the changes in the other variables. The y-axis is used for the dependent variable. The value of y depends on the value of x. So your dependent variable depends on your independent variable. So we call the dependent variable the variable that we measure, and it is the data that you're collecting in the experiment. So the axes are usually labeled with the name of the variable and units of measure. So if you take a look at this just generic example. The graph title always goes at the top. Um, the title provides an introduction to the data that's in the graph. It should always be in a Y title versus X title format. And what that means is that whatever's on this Y axis or the dependent variable comes first in your title and whatever's on the X axis comes second. And I'll show you that in an example in a minute. So in this example, we're going to work on reading and interpreting the graph and doing that through answering the questions about the graph. So let's first take a look at the graph. On this graph, on the y-axis, we have minutes or time, which is what we use for line graphs. On, oh my goodness, I just said that wrong. On the x-axis, I'm sorry, we have minutes. On the y-axis, we have the pulse rate in beats per minute. So, overall, our title here is not correct because it needs to be in a Y versus X format. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And if you look, for every minute the pulse was taken and the number of the pulse was recorded on the graph. So if we go through and use this graph and answer questions, we can use it for doing data interpretation. So the first question here is asking us, what is the largest number on the y-axis? So if you go, it's not asking what is the largest number on the line. It is asking what is the largest number on this y-axis, which is the vertical one. The way I remember this is y points towards the sky, right? So if you can see, I'm pointing vertical or up. So the largest number on the y-axis is right here, it's 140. Now we don't just write down 140 because we do not leave our numbers without units. So we're gonna write down with the units and it is 140 beats per minute. And let me highlight this so it sticks out for you guys in a better color. All right. The next question is asking, what is the pulse rate recorded at four minutes? For this, we need to actually use the graph. So we need, we know, our information we know is four minutes. So we're gonna go over on the x-axis to four minutes. And then it's asking us pulse rate, which is over here on the vertical axis. So I'm gonna go to the four minutes and I'm gonna follow my graph up. And you can see the data point right here says 110. So the pulse rate recorded at four minutes is 
110 beats per minute. Okay, do not forget the units, please. Here, this third question is asking us to answer in a different way. It is giving us the y axis value. So it's saying, all right, 95 beats per minute. How many minutes was that recorded at? So one thing you can do is you can go up here and because this graph's already labeled, you can be like, oh, look, 95, it's two minutes. But if you didn't have that data, what you do is you go over to the y axis, you find where 95 is, it's in between 80 and 100, but closer to 100, and you would follow it over until it intersects your line. And we can see that 95 beats per minute happen at two minutes. So again, we're going to record our answer. And sorry about that. We are going, I'm just going to change the color for you. And we're going to put it at two, not just two, it's two minutes. Earlier when I told you the title was incorrect, um, this is where we're going to fix it. So the title is supposed to be in a Y versus X format. What should be the proper title for this graph? So if we go back up to our graph and we take a look, this is the Y axis and this is the X axis title. So our title is Y versus X. So it's pulse rate in beats per minute versus minutes. And I'm going to write it like this. Let me get you the proper color. Okay, it's pulse rate. versus minutes. And that's a very specific title. It tells us exactly what's going on. In science, we don't need to be fancy and cute and give it fluffy little titles. We just name it exactly what it is. Now, what you're going to do uh, with your teachers, you're gonna spend some time answering each of these questions independently, and then we will refer to it um, when we go over it together. Thank you for watching my screencast. Now I need to figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.